Hey everybody, this is Joe. I'm in my Houston, Texas garden and I'm in zone 9A and it's still pretty chilly here. It's still very wintry looking in my garden and I haven't cut anything back yet. And so I thought I would take a little look at my flower pots, um, which we protected from the freeze in December. And so the flower pots still look really pretty. And I've added things like pansies also. This is the flower pot. I actually forgot to take this in. It's tucked way back in the back of the yard. And I completely forgot uh, to get this in the garage. And it was fine. It was 16 degrees two nights here before, before Christmas. And this did just fine. Um, and this is a pipe vine, and I grow that for pipe vine swallowtail caterpillars. And then just a little as aside, this is what happens when you make your own compost. That is a tomato from something in my compost, some tomato that you know went, went squishy and didn't get eaten. So, and there, oh, there's another one there. So that's what happens when you make your own compost. And this giant pot. Um, I've still got, I, I've transplanted this olive tree into this pot and I have a huge heavy bag of um, crushed granite, which is what I've got on the ground here, um, to kind of help it not fall over and I'm sort of afraid to take it away. So um, we didn't move this uh, inside from the freeze in December. Um, I sort of tucked it back in this corner and wrapped it a little bit. Um, with some frost cloth, but that's about all I did. And it does have some new growth on it. You can see the, the damage and uh, you can see I've lost, I'll have to eventually clip all this part back, but it's, I, I was, I'm really happy that that's coming back. I was a little worried. Oh, hello, Miss Doubtfire. Did you have to be in the video? Hello, there she is. So the pansies I bought are just incredible. I don't remember, I didn't keep the tag, um, but they are so big and so pretty and really prolific. You can see uh, how many, that's a single little four inch pot that I bought. And then I've got a little rue behind it for, uh, for swallowtail butterflies. And this is a chili Pekin, this is a native Texas uh, plant. I'm growing it in a pot, but I could put it in the ground. It would do fine as well. And you can see it's got tiny little hot peppers. Now you can eat those and put them in your, in your guacamole or whatever, um, but the birds eat them as well. This is a real good source of food for birds. It's called bird pepper because they will eat these little peppers and then uh, poop the seeds out all over your yard and all over the neighborhood. So uh, it, it can be really prolific um, here. Now I've got um, some uh, society garlic, which I'm hoping will do well in a pot. I've always grown it in the ground, not very successfully. And I dug it up this year and stuck it in a pot. Here are these beautiful ivy geraniums that just are stars of the show. This winter, they just have been gorgeous. Now this one's fully red. They're really supposed to have pink stripes on them. That one's kind of sad looking. But uh, so now I've got kind of both on the same plant, um, but I'm sure this is the hybrid looking and it's sort of run home to mama there, but it's, they have just been so beautiful. And here's another even bigger one here. And then this is one of the things that's just done so well uh, we did bring that in. That's a, a um, Euphorbia Diamond Frost. And then I've got a little, um, I think this is a homegrown, that's why, why it's so small still, um, pansy. I, I it hasn't flowered yet. And then I've got a little tucked in cyclamen that's finally starting to bloom. But I think that um, foliage is really pretty. I like that combination of that foliage and then this fluff. And then hopefully that'll, it'll probably be purple. I pretty much pick purple and blue pansies and some white, but I bet you that's going to be purple. And then here's, here's a little better look. And I have been turning these pots every uh, week. Um, I try to turn them so that it's pretty all the way around just because it gets sun from that direction. Um, but it's just 
they have just been blooming and blooming and blooming and it looks so good. I really think it likes the cool weather. It did fine. Um, it wasn't terrific, but it did fine in the summer in uh, part shade. I climb back over here. Now this is sort of an experimental pot. Uh, this is called stock. It smells really pretty, really strong anyway. You might not like the smell. I'm kind of, the jury is out for me. But they, you know, they were sort of, I'd never grown it before. They were sort of in with the pansies and the snapdragons at the store. And they've been looking good for, gosh, I mean, a couple months now. And they just do really, really well. They're very happy. Um, and it looks like it's gonna rebloom. This part does not look terrific. But I've got some pieces. You can see I've trimmed this down. There's a single variety versus the double variety there. And, uh, and that's all coming back. I trim that. Um, and then th these wonderful blue pansies. I've got my scented geraniums here. And they're okay. I think they're a little happier uh, in the winter. Um, but they're so leggy. I just have tried to embrace the legginess because they never seem to look better than this. So I'm just embracing it. Here's my little, as another pipe vine variety. I kept it under this because the squirrels kept digging it up. It was so beautiful. The day I put it in this pot, the squirrels trashed it and, uh, and it just hasn't recovered. But I've got a little bit, this is all from seed and I'll try a little more, but I'm, I'm really hoping this bounces back um, in the, you know, when it warms up. But uh, it's, you know, it's alive, but I'm keeping the squirrels out of it with my little, little cage that I got. I got that from um, Gardener's. Oh, I was going to be helpful and tell you where I got it. And now I can't think of Gardener's Supply. Gardener's Supply catalog. Now here on this big old pot, I really put this um, big penta in this pot. Just sort of, I found it in late fall and I didn't want to put it in the ground it's it is tender here and so I went ahead and put that in a pot so I could put it in the garage um, when it froze and so I'll put that in the ground um, later but it's a really nice penta and it's been one of the really reliable things to have I see butterflies every day out here um, still and so this has been a really reliable thing for butterflies and for bees as well these are little homegrown pansies. That's why they're so tiny. Um, eventually they will hopefully bloom for me. And that is a little coral nymph salvia that I grew from seed. It looks kind of, I don't know, like maybe it's got spider mites. Anyway, I don't quite know what to do about that. And then I've got vinca in here and this little, I love this lobelia. And then it looks like my, um, petunias are kind of bouncing back and maybe getting ready to flower. They looked pretty sad um, for a long time. And then these are more pansies that have uh, come up from seed and I'm pretty excited about that. They're, these are really, I don't know, I think maybe that's a viola which is supposed to be that little and I think that's a pansy which is maybe supposed to be bigger. And then here's another um, different uh, variety but another um, ivy geranium which has done really well. It's a little bit more coral pink and I'm kind of letting it go to seed a little bit. I thought it would be fun to see. See that little, that's the seed pod right there. And I'm gonna kind of let a couple of them go to seed and see if I can grow some from seed. I don't know. Um, more society garlic. This is chives. I bought this, good heavens, like a year ago and they just, they didn't die, but they never looked good and they never flowered. And I pulled them out of the ground and I realized that they were in some kind of growing medium that was just, it wouldn't get wet. You know, it was that weird stuff that I could like literally, it would just float in water. It would not soak the water up. So I kind of pulled all of that stuff out and gave it some good potting soil. And I mean, it looks better, but we'll, we'll see if it blooms in the in the spring. I would be really excited if it did. So I could pretend this was a little English garden. Now that, those pansies, those are little violas. That's my favorite one, I think. Second favorite in the yard. Um, I just love it. And then another ivy, uh, another scented geranium, which got leggy real fast. 
and then this is that sedum autumn joy that it, you know in England they grow and it's three feet tall and bushy and fabulous and I have it just in this little sad little thing right here so but I do have a little coming back and then this is a um, what's that a um, I can't think of what that is. It's not a portulaca, which is a double flower. This is a single flower. It might come to me if we're lucky. And then more of those gorgeous. I just bought a ton of these um, when I was just right after the freeze and I was desperate for color. And so here's more of that just fabulous purple. And this one's a little bit different. Um, and I'll put a little white in there. And then these are um, day lilies. They're not looking good, folks. Um, I put them in the ground. They didn't do well in the ground. They didn't have enough sun. I moved them here thinking, well, I can put them in the sun. Well, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna put them back in the ground uh, when it warms up, but I hope there's something left. I mean, they do not look good. So anyway, that one's called Storm Warning and it's a deep, deep maroon. I, I really don't like bright red in the, in the yard. It's not really in my color scheme. Um, I really do pink, purple, blue, white pale pale yellow not bright yellow and now i'm sort of adding a maroon um to it this year um and this was sort of supposed to be a maroon so i don't know if that'll come up i want to put it in the ground and i've got my little succulent theater here which of course now i've added things and you can see as we walk along these are all it's like texas blue bonnets and uh, evening primrose, all kinds of wildflower things popping up, and weeds. This is a ghost plant in a tiny little strawberry pot. I just love that. And next to a big old Texas blue bonnet. I'm hoping that the blue bonnets will be all puffy. And they get, you know, they'll get 18 inches high. And I'm hoping that they'll get real fluffy in between all the pots. That's the look I'm looking for. Here's another scented geranium. Things have crept into the, uh, non-succulents have crept into the succulent theater. This is a, I grew that little viola from seed. Um, and, uh, oh, and see, this is like, that's a wildflower. I'm not sure what that is. That's definitely a wildflower seed I threw out here. And this is a little uh, self-seeded, um, I think those are all pansies or violas because I had something like this in this pot last year. Here are more daylilies I'm trying to uh, limp through until the spring. They just didn't well, do well. I put them in too much shade um, last year. And so this is just a holdover. They look like they're doing a little better, a little new growth. But again, I, I protected all of these things in the garage uh, during the freeze. Although really some of the more tender things I even put in the house and our house looked like a jungle in the kitchen uh, for about a week. Um, and so I did put a lot of the succulents, the more tender things in the, not just in the garage, but in the house. And it's an unheated um, garage. And then here, I didn't, I didn't put that plant in. I just sprinkled seeds. I put little pansy seeds and little viola seeds on the so on the edges of a bunch of these pots. This is one there as well. Um, I just tucked them in, and this seems to be the one that's done the best. Um, but I've got my little succulents that I love, and my little aloe. Here's a big aloe plant, but like right in this little corner, I tucked uh, some seeds in there and nothing has come up, but you get the idea what my, what my thought process was. And then I've noticed today, I think these are all viola pansy seeds right there, uh, seedlings. And then that's another Texas blue bonnet, which is a little short blue lupin. Um, this is another um, sedum that has been blooming, but uh, much darker than that uh, autumn joy over there. And then, oh, that might be a little uh, viola coming up. Now this maybe is my favorite. Oh, look at that, right? Gorgeous. And I just bought those. I did not grow those from seed, but I just think those maybe are my favorites um, right now in the garden. They're just so cool. And then I've got, you know, 
one of the funny things about gardening in general, but also in particular about, about these um, succulents is like I had a pot of this, a whole big, beautiful, I mean, it wasn't big, big pot of them. And it was so, so beautiful. And I happened to break a piece off and stick it in here. Well, this piece is fine, looks good. But the other one, that pot just died. Just every single bit of it died. I have no, you know, it's 20 feet away. I have no explanation of why that died and this didn't, but you know, that's gardening for you. And then look, there's a little, there's a little uh, pansy right in there that I threw seeds in. Um, this thing's getting so big. And then let's see, I'll go around this way. Here's another, this is sort of a jade plant with a small leaf. And then this little stuff, I cannot make this stuff look good. This is a, a sort of a, 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 sort of hangs down. Uh, it never looks good. I'm kind of thinking that might go in the compost. But I've got a new, I laid down a leaf that broke off. I've got a new plant coming off the end of that leaf. It just throws down some little roots first and then uh, leaves. And I think there's another one. Uh, I don't think it's got anything going yet. But that's just a broken off leaf from this um, that my kitty cat muffins broke off by climbing over this the whole time it was in the house during the breeze. Thanks, muffins. Rascal. Here's a big jade plant. I just love it. This is a chunk of a big one that sort of fell apart. And this is one of my favorite, favorite little things. Uh, somebody gave this to me, um, a complete stranger. We uh, did a porch pickup trade-off of plants. We were on Facebook together. She's in Houston. She was like, does anybody have this? And I was like, I have that. And so I said, I'll chop some off and leave it on my front porch. And I did, and she left me this awesome stuff. And I love the purple stem of that. So thank you, thank you neighbor lady who I don't remember, but I thought that was really sweet of her. Here's one of the things that does so well, are these giant big flaps. Um, I don't know the name of this, um, but it, they do really well in my yard. And then I swear that's a, a um, some kind of uh, milkweed. I'm hoping that that's a milkweed. And then again, I just, these were broken off leaves and I just laid them down and here they go. And then this one as well, that leaf, oh, here's the leaf right there. See that dried up leaf? It's already broken off, right? But it's left its little baby behind, which is so cool. And let's see, what else have we got over here? Oh, I love this pot. Okay, I love all the gray and it keeps touching the ground and rooting right? So you can see how it's rooted right there. See the little roots on it? And so I keep pinching it off. And so like that's where this came from is I just pinched it off of there and tucked it in here. But I love the combination of this sort of gray green and then this super waxy um, there. And then this third kind, which is kind of fat and funny. Kind of, I, I really like it. I don't know what's happening here. That little leaf is a goner, but I love the way it's crawling up through. And I like the three colors, a very gray blue. And this is a little bit on the yellowish side. And then this is much darker green. I like that combination. That's one of my favorite pots right now. And this is this little stuff. It has fuzzy leaves and it is just, um, it didn't do well. My cats broke a bunch of pieces off, um, but it does so well. And it's like, don't water it. If I water it, it does terribly. If I just leave it, no matter how hot it is out here, it does great. This is if you have a kid in a dorm and you want to give them something they won't kill, look for something that's like a, a jade plant, but fuzzy. And, uh, and it will still be alive when they come home for the summer. Here's my win for the uh, for the month. This pot, I went to a resale shop. Now, if y'all have seen my my uh, videos before, you'll know that I buy. I love these pots that come with the um, kind of the the they already have sort of mossy green sort of infused into it. So when you you buy it, you bring it home, 
and uh, water it. And after a couple of weeks, it'll get all green and mossy. You see how that one's all green and mossy? Well, they're wildly expensive. And so that's what I get for my birthday and Christmas. And, you know, anytime I can think of for my husband to buy me something, it's like, it's Mother's Day, buy me a flower pot. That's what I want because they're wildly expensive for flower pots. So here I am at a resale shop that's a known to be more expensive than most other resale shops. It's not like a Goodwill cheap resale shop. It's sort of high end, but they have an outdoor area. And, um, and I found this flower pot and I thought, well, you know, I think I paid $15 for it. And I thought, well, that's, uh, I really like it. I like, I've wanted a little, it's actually, uh, a, it's called, a um, what's it called? A bulb dish. So it's really made to force, bulbs in and that's why it's so shallow and um, I've wanted one and I've wanted one from this company called Campo di Fiore um, but they're they're like I don't know $75 or something so I've decided to buy this I'm gonna burn 15 bucks on it because I really like it and then I pick it up and sure enough I don't know if I can find it it's got stamped in the side down here Campo di Fiore and I'm like oh score I'm so excited uh, but I don't think it's got the mossy stuff on it, but I'm so, so happy about that. I'm feeling like a big win on that. Here is more. Here's another one of my favorites. This, it just gets prettier and prettier. This is a jade plant. It's more of that chunk. This huge one here just, you know, fell apart. That's part of it. This is part of it. And that's part of it. And this one I think is the prettiest piece. I just sort of sat it down in here and, um, and a couple of two years ago and it looks really nice and I've got some of that favorite little purple purple stem stuff down in there and I really like that and that's actually in a um, oh look at that it's actually in a um, in an orchid pot that has holes in it and look it's coming through the hole I just saw that that's so fun that's so fun and then here's more the big big flap and then I thought I lost this thing but it looks like it's coming back I really kind of Monty Don has those and I thought I'd give it a try and then I don't know what this is I stuck it in there clearly but I don't remember what that is then I've got my gorgeous enormous aloe that is wicked look at those spines wicked sharp so, um, and it's already outgrown its pot. I got that from a friend for my birthday and, um, and I just love it. And then I've got, this is another chunk. It's just that big old jade plant. You can see how big the trunk is right there. And this was just a stem. The trunk of it that died was enormous. And so I was super bummed to lose that but I did get some really pretty pieces off of it that survived. Here's another one of those awesome pots. You can see how green and crusty it is. I just love that. It's like instant age. And this is a big uh, dragon wing begonia that is a hot mess right now, but it's got so many flowers on it. I've left it. I want to trim it. It's killing me. I want to trim it back, um, but and it will be beautiful when I trim it back. It'll take a month or two and, uh, and fluff back out with new bright, bright green leaves. You can see a little bit of new growth there. But the older growth has sort of turned sort of this bronzy color. And um, I've been talking to uh, Rachel from uh, her YouTube channel is Gulf Coast Butterfly Gardens and or gardening and we've been talking about how when it gets cold some of these flowers turn darker than they usually are i've had it happen with um, a salvia bucantha that turned darker purple i've had it happen with a with a rose and she is having it happen with a um a coral nymph salvia it has sort of a deeper color and i think i might be imagining it I think this is another thing that is a deeper color when it's cold and during the summer or during the spring, you know, when I cut this back, it'll be a paler pink and I'll have to go back and look at pictures, but I feel like this is a darker color than it usually is. And certainly the leaves are. 
but I think the flowers have gotten darker. Ooh, this is getting to be a long, long video. Sorry, you guys, if you're still here. Thank you. I've got all kinds of colanchos blooming so beautifully. And smaller ones that are pink. There's a little bigger coral one. And this is one of the great things about colanchos is that um, we had some work done on the house and, uh, and this one got broken off and I literally stuck it back in the same pot. It, it didn't even miss a beat, it's still blooming. You would never know that a month ago that was just like snapped off on the ground. And then my big old, look at that, my big old aloe vera blooming. Look at those wonderful little flowers. I just love that. And that plant you know, has been passed down. That was my mom's uh, and she's been gone 10 years, um, but that's just been passed down. And, um, and the, you know, it has a little pups. You can see it's got a little baby. If I get, pull that out and give that away, the big ones will stay big. If I keep the little, leave the pups in, it will fill that pot with babies and sort of stunt the growth. Uh, none of them will get this big. They've got to have some room to grow. Here's my husband's uh, bonsai. He's so excited. He got a little maple bonsai for Christmas and uh, it's just leafing out. And then this is for another bonsai. That's a willow that hasn't gotten potted up yet. It's because he's in charge of his pots and uh, so they're not done. Uh, I was in charge, they would be in would be done. Here are all those fantastic purple pansies. And then here is where I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. It's not red, but it's a deep maroon. Look how beautiful that is. It's all velvety in there. And that's kind of what I'm adding to the, to the yard this year is some dark, dark red like that. This pot's going crazy. It really belongs on the other side. And this one belongs here and this one needs to get turned but it got put they got put in the wrong place um, by the guys that helped me move all these things into the garage for the freeze and it's too heavy to turn and it's too heavy to trade them so here it is all this pretty stuff is hidden against the wall here's that fabulous Picasso's purple uh, petunia I've got a little phlox in there I've got another little petunia that's kind of coming back and this blue lobelia oh it's I love it. And then more euphorbia, diamond frost. And then this, I don't see any flowers on it. Well, sort of. Uh, this is a salvia um, indigo spires and it, I bought it by accident. It was, I didn't look at the label closely enough and I stuck it in this pot cause it's really gonna get like seven feet tall. And, um, and that's not really, I don't really have a place for it. It falls over. I've got my little seedlings there. There are the little engines that could, um, making it through the chilly times. It gets, if it gets below 40, if it gets to be 40 at night, I'll put them in the garage, close the garage, drag them back out in the morning. It's, I'm worried that I planted them and it's so chilly that it stunted their growth. And so, but I only planted, you can see, like I only planted 12, 12 cells of one kind, right? You can see this is one kind, they haven't come up. Here's another kind, they have come up. This is another kind that has come up, but I have a whole packet left. And so when it warms up, I will plant an, another succession of it. Um, maybe in uh, three weeks, maybe uh, close to the first of March, I will put some more in just to see if I can get them to grow a little better. They seem very stunted and I, and I, I think that if the soil is too cold, you know, things can come up but can be stunted and I have not invested in little warming mats or grow lights or anything like that. I'm pretty lazy about it. I put it out here. It worked okay last year. So I'm thinking oh, it'll work okay this year. So I'm hoping that they will turn out nicely. Here's the pot that's supposed to be on the other side. I found this cool sort of magenta lobelia. I didn't even know it came in that color. So I couldn't obviously live without that. We've had big storms and uh, we even had a really terrible tornado in Houston, um, which almost never happens. And in that storm, the tornado wasn't near me, but in that storm, a lot of things kind of got <laughs> blown over and knocked over. So this was one of my uh, 
one of the casualties here. Um, and then I tucked in, oh, see, here's that. Here it is. This is that purple uh, Indigo Spires Salvia, which I'm hoping because it's in a pot will maybe stay smaller. It's kind of floppy, but you can see it's getting ready to bloom like crazy. I did put one, I wanted a little pale yellow um, Snapdragon and I stuck a little Delphinium in here, um, just kind of for kicks. I thought it would be fun to have something tall and I think that's gonna be blue. And then I'll sort of end on these Calanchos. My goodness, look, it's just this, I made a hedge out of it with my pots. These Calanchos are so incredible and they're all just popping out. And this is one of those things, I don't really do red in my garden, but these were my mother's. <laughs> So uh, they're sort of an heirloom to me. So uh, I keep them in here, but they're not my, not my color scheme. And then, oh goodness, look at this ghost plant. Oh, this is a ghost plant, but I've tucked another, you know, years ago, I tucked another uh, succulent in here and it just peeks out a little bit here and there. But look at that fantastic flower on that. Isn't that wonderful? Well, thanks for looking, you guys. Sorry I made such a long video. You're very kind if you have still stuck around. I hope you enjoyed looking at my pots, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, I hope it's warming up at your house. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye.